In this video, we're going to talk about how you actually deploy your application. The main thing to remember is that you'll have to move it onto your production platform, and it has to be in an area that will be accessible by you if you're not the administrator or the root of that machine. Once you've done this, you have to make sure that you have your production platform set up ready to go. That means your web server installed and running appropriately, your fast CGI, however you're going to do that, installed and running properly, and your database installed and running properly if you're going to do it on that machine or, or on another server. In this case, we're going to take a look at what it takes to get the like TTPD web server configured up and going. So we've we're assuming that we've copied over our application onto the server and that we've installed the light TTPD and our fast CGI connectors all the way through. And if you go to the installation video that has our installation on our Mac stuff, and I believe that was back in section four, there is a step-by-step -step guide to installing those extra web server and the fast CGI tools that you'll need. Once those tools are installed and your application is moved over, what you'll need to create is this lighttpd.comp file shown here. There's several things that start off in this file that set up the server itself. So what happens is when you launch the server, it's going to look for this configuration file and then load up based on this configuration. So we can set it to a particular port. We're going to bind it to a particular address. This is especially important if you have a machine that has multiple IP addresses. You need to put this in here, especially to work on the Macs. We're going to load some modules. This is particularly the one that we really need, the fast CGI module. We're going to tell it where to store its PID. That's the process ID. We're going to have a URL rewrite rule in here. We're going to have some server stuff set up down here with regards to the logging and the root folder. Now these are very specific to your application. So you notice that this is a particular path to the application. You're going to have to adjust these for your application. Now we'll include this file and another file in the working files so that you have access to them. Further down here we have some hash set up that we're doing with the fast CGI for this server and the most important one of this whole thing is to force your Rails application to move into the production environment. Now the main thing that this does is it switches to your production database. If you don't do this it's going to continue to use your development database and not your production database so this is very important to have this in place. So like I said I'll include this work file in the working file so you have access to it. Now I also created, which I'll include this file, a control file. It's just a shell file. It should work in Mac OS X and in Linux. You'll have to do something else for Windows. Perhaps through the service there's some things you could do there. This will help you start and stop the light TTBD web server. And specifically it sets up where the comp file is first, again this will have to depend on your application, where the PID again for it is, and then we have some commands. So it's basically you can issue like TTPD CTL and say start, and it'll say starting, and then it'll go ahead and launch it with this config file. So feel free to use this file and modify it as you need it. With those two files, and as long as your light HTTPD or light TTPD is set up and running appropriately with the fast CGI module, you should be in business. Now the things that you'll have to keep in mind are that sessions are going to have to be cleaned up and taken care of. If we go and look in our movie critic application here and we go into our temp and you'll see sessions these do not get deleted these don't get cleaned up as long as we're using the file based session tracking mechanism and not the database one you're gonna find these files now on my production machine where I have a Ruby on Rails application it's actually putting them in the slash temp so that the machines temp directory has sessions in there and I actually have a little script 
that gets run that cleans out those session files every so often and I will include that in the working file so you can see how it works it's a very simple little shell script to clean out those files so you have to pay attention to those files the one other thing that you'll have to pay attention to is your logs these logs will continue to grow and not get rolled over so you'll have to manually take care of rolling over over or create a script to roll those logs over and some systems have automatic log rollovers and you could include this in that system to get rid of those so that's basically what you need to look at for deploying on Ruby on Rails and some basic maintenance involved with Ruby on Rails